1 a.m., Kim Jong-un has continued his saber-rattling with an astonishing outburst against USA. In an editorial published by state-run media agency KNCA, North Korea attacked President Donald Trump's decision to send naval forces to the Japan Sea. It said, this is a stern warning to the U.S. imperialists and their stooges running amok for aggression and war moves. The world will clearly witness how the crime-woven history of the U.S. imperialists will be over, how the despicable remaining days of the South Korean puppet forces will come to an end and how national reunification, the cherished desire of the Korean nation, will be achieved. 3 p.m., North Korea has detained another American citizen on suspicion of acts against the state, which if confirmed would make him the fourth U.S. citizen to be held by the isolated country amid diplomatic tensions. Kim Hak Song, who was detained on Saturday, worked for the Pyongyang University of Science and Technology, the North's KCNA news agency said. A relevant institution of the DPRK detained American citizen Kim Hak Song on May 6 under a law of the DPRK on suspension of his hostile acts against it, KCNA said. DPRK is short for the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, North Korea's official name. North Korea, whatever comes, we will handle it. Vice Foreign Minister says Pyongyang fully prepared for any American attack and vows to bolster nuclear arsenal. A North Korean official says his country is ready for war if the United States attacks as a U.S. aircraft carrier group heads for the region. There is speculation that Pyongyang may conduct a sixth nuclear weapons test on Saturday. Vice Foreign Minister Han song ryol told the Associated Press that North Korea changed its military strategy two years ago when reports emerged of U.S.-South Korea decapitation strike training to stress preemptive actions of its own. We've got a powerful nuclear deterrent already in our hands, and we certainly will not keep our arms crossed in the face of a U.S. preemptive strike, he said. Whatever comes from the U.S., we will cope with it. We are fully prepared to handle it. He vowed North Korea will keep building up its nuclear arsenal in quality and quantity. Tensions between Pyongyang and Washington go back to the 1950-53 Korean War, which ended in an armistice, not a peace treaty. But the heat has been rising rapidly since U.S. President Donald Trump took office in January. This year's joint war games between the U.S. and South Korean militaries are the biggest so far. The USS Carl Vinson aircraft carrier has been diverted back to the waters off the Korean peninsula after heading for Australia, and U.S. satellite imagery suggests the North could conduct another underground nuclear test at any time. China said on Friday tension over North Korea had to be stopped from reaching an irreversible and unmanageable stage, while Japanese media have said the government in Tokyo is also discussing how to cope with a possible flood of North Korean refugees. Trump has threatened that if China is not willing to do more to squeeze the North over its nuclear and missile programs, the U.S. might take matters into its own hands. North Korea's military chimed in on Friday saying it would ruthlessly ravage the United States if it chose to attack. Our toughest counteraction against the U.S. and its vassal forces will be taken in such a merciless manner as not to allow the aggressors to survive, North Korea's official KCNA news agency quoted its military as saying in a statement. North Korea recently tested a ballistic missile and claims it is close to perfecting an intercontinental ballistic missile and nuclear warhead that could attack the U.S. mainland. Many analysts believe at its current pace of testing, North Korea could reach that potentially game-changing milestone within a few years, under Trump's watch as president. The North conducted two nuclear weapon tests last year alone. The first was of what it claims to have been a hydrogen bomb and the second was its most powerful ever. Expectations are high that the North may put its newest missiles on display during Saturday's massive military parade that marks the Day of the Sun the 105th anniversary of the birth of state founder Kim Il-sung. Han also did not rule out the possibility of a new nuclear bomb test in the near future. That is something that our headquarters decides, he said. At a time and at a place where the headquarters deems necessary, it will take place. Annual U.S.-South Korea military exercises have consistently infuriated the North, which views them as rehearsals for an invasion. Washington and Seoul deny that. Han said Trump's Twitter statements have also added fuel to the flames. 
Trump posted a tweet on Tuesday in which he said the North is looking for trouble and reiterated his call for more pressure from Beijing, North Korea's economic lifeline, to clamp down on trade and strengthen its enforcement of UN sanctions to persuade Pyongyang to denuclearize. Trump is always making provocations with his aggressive words, Han said. It's not the DPRK but the US and Trump that makes trouble. U.S. intelligence services are planning to increase their espionage capabilities, after the House of Representatives introduced a bill titled the North Korea Intelligence Enhancement Act. The proposed legislation would give the U.S. intelligence's agencies clearer monitoring powers over the North Korea's nuclear weapons capacity, enable early warning systems and assessments to hold Kim Jong unaccountable to the sanctions imposed against the rogue state. The bill, which will affect America's 16 intelligence services, including the Defense Intelligence Agency, will give the U.S. legal backing to enforce the United Nations Security Council resolutions. The purpose is to direct the Director of National Intelligence to establish an integration cell to monitor and enforce United Nations Security Council resolutions with respect to North Korea, and for other purposes. In addition, the U.S. bill states its aim is to identify any gaps in intelligence relating to the monitoring of the nuclear weapons program of North Korea, and provide net assessments and recommendations to the Director of National Intelligence relating to North Korea. The proposed legislation comes as reclusive state threatens to reduce the White House to ashes with a nuclear strike if provoked. The reclusive state has also accused the Central Intelligence Agency CIA, of plotting to kill Kim Jong-un in a chemical attack. North Korea has claimed that the aim was to kill their leader during a public event in Pyongyang. The state-controlled KCNA news agency said, the heinous terrorist criminal group was discovered which infiltrated the DPRK after careful preparations. According to the report, a North Korean citizen was involved in the plot using biochemical substances including radioactive substance and nano-poisonous substance to kill off the leader. The report said the plot was uncovered and accused members of the CIA of working with North Korean citizens to carry out state-sponsored terrorism. The Pentagon is looking into potential connections between the North Korean hermit state and the Islamic Republic of Iran. U.S. defense officials fear the two counties have been sharing information on their rogue missiles for years. An Iranian ballistic missile test in late January was supposedly based on North Korean designs, according to the Pentagon. Last summer Iran has also launched a missile similar in design to Kim Jong-un's Musudan missile, one of the country's most successful weapons. Reduced to ashes North Korea threatens the White House with a nuclear strike. North Korea has threatened to turn the White House to ashes with a nuclear strike as Kim Jong-un's regime warned the days of the U.S. are over. In a scathing 2000-word editorial published by Kim Jong-un's state media agency KNCA, Pyongyang condemned President Trump's decision to dispatch naval forces to the Japan Sea, and promised a victory for the DPRK. Alarmingly, the hermit nation's military commander said the White House would be reduced to ashes as the editorial claimed the U.S. was planning to destroy Pyongyang. The editorial read, This is a stern warning to the U.S. imperialists and their stooges running amok for aggression and war moves. The world will clearly witness how the crime-woven history of the U.S. imperialists will be over, how the despicable remaining days of the South Korean puppet forces will come to an end and how national reunification, the cherished desire of the Korean nation, will be achieved. The article also claimed 330,000 U.S. soldiers took part in military drills designed to rehearse an all-out war with North Korea. The piece pledged that Pyongyang will retaliate and the crime-woven history of the U.S. imperialists will be over. The propaganda arm let rip at U.S. forces with a barrage of insults branding soldiers murderous ogres, robbers, air pirates and warriors who master the occult arts. North Korea also accused the U.S. of being a hotbed of evil which needed to be hit with an indiscriminate preemptive nuclear strike to transform the superpower into something that cannot come back to life again. The despotic nation also claimed the war drill's key resolve and full eagle were hideous state-sponsored terrorism and the most vicious and adventurous in history. Tensions between North Korea and the U.S. show no signs of cooling after the rogue state this week accused the CIA of plotting to assassinate Kim Jong-un.
The Pentagon is reportedly investigating a possible anti-U.S. military alliance between North Korea and Iran. U.S. military chiefs fear the Hermit Kingdom and the Islamic Republic may have formed a new tag team of terror. Iran attempted to test fire a missile from a submarine earlier this week. The sub is believed to have been based on a North Korean design, suggesting military coordination between the two pariah states. Both countries are arch enemies of America, with George W. Bush describing them as the axis of evil. Iran appeared to be coming in from the cold after signing an agreement with Barack Obama to give up its nuclear program. But it appears Tehran has been colluding with Pyongyang. Donald Trump has described North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un's regime as the greatest threat to U.S. national security. Iran, which has emerged as a major regional power in the Middle East, tried to fire a missile from a midget submarine on Tuesday. It was the first time the country's navy had tried to launch a JASC-2 cruise missile from underwater. The test failed. U.S. intelligence sources say the sub was the same type as a North Korean one that sank a South Korean warship in 2010. Almost 50 South Korean sailors were killed when the frigate Xiamen sank in the Yellow Sea, between China and Korea. Iranian ballistic missile test fired in January was also based on a North Korean design. And last year, Iran conducted another missile launch similar to a North Korean Musudan, the most advanced missile Pyongyang has successful tested to date. Military experts have warned Iran and North Korea could team up to launch an electromagnetic pulse attack on the US. They could knock out all power in mainland America by detonating a nuclear weapon in space. Spy satellites have spotted activity at a North Korean shipyard that suggests it is about to test another submarine-launched ballistic missile. Terror team, North Korea could unite with ISIS to wage war against U.S. Two of the U.S. biggest enemies could unite to wipe out Donald Trump, according to Shah claims. Military officials have named North Korea as the biggest threat to America's security as Kim Jong-un presses ahead with his nuclear missile program. The tubby tyrant has vowed to launch his ICBM at U.S. heartland, reducing it to ashes. The U.S. has also stepped up its campaign to remove ISIS completely from the map, after pushing the terror group back in Iraq and Syria. But a shock theory has claimed the two villains could pull their resources together to create a cocktail of weapons for war against the U.S. The nightmare scenario could see ISIS terrorists nuke a U.S. city with a dirty bomb hidden in a suitcase. Dr. Patricia Doyle said, We already know that Iran and North Korea have a long-standing working relationship. I wonder how much of the Iran NK partnership is due to both countries' hostilities with the US if those two get together, ISIS may be able to help North Korea with infiltrating the US and a friendship between the two could be very valuable for both ISIS and North Korea. North Korea does have a spy network among the Korea community in the US The spy network has mostly spied on the Koreans checking for defectors from North Korea and was seeking out any Koreans who might be working with the US ISIS training could bring the North Koreans up to date on terrorism such as assembling and placing suitcase nukes in crowded cities in South Korea and the US There has been no indication that North Korea has the expertise to create a small enough nuclear warhead to fit in a suitcase and North Korea showed this year its preferred technique for killing is poison, evidenced by the death of Kim Jong-un's brother, Kim Jong-nam. Dr. Doyle said, a friendship between ISIS and North Korea could be exactly what the adage means, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Seoul, South Korea, Kim Jong-un is detaining American citizens as human shields amid fears of a U.S. attack targeting his nuclear and missile programs as part of a new form of hostage diplomacy, according to experts. North Korea has long detained U.S. citizens to use as bargaining chips. But unlike his father Kim Jong-il, the young dictator is using prisoners to protect himself rather than as a tool to bring the U.S. to the negotiating table, analysts said. On Saturday, U.S. citizen Kim Hak-song was detained for hostile acts against the Republic, the state-run Korean Central News Agency announced. He had been working at Pyongyang Science and Technology University, it added. And last month, North Korea stopped U.S. citizen Kim Sang-duk, who also was known as Tony Kim, at Pyongyang Airport as he was preparing to leave the country. Kim had also been teaching at that university before he was taken into custody. 
Saturday's detention brings the total number of Americans held by the isolated nation to four, and comes amid worsening tensions between North Korea and the United States. Kim Jong-un is using hostage diplomacy as a part of his military and defense strategy with focus on preventing the U.S. from removing him from power as well as to prevent the U.S. from taking military options against North Korea, Dr. An Chan Il, president of the World Institute for North Korea Studies and a former defector, told NBC News. Dr. Ko Yu Han, a professor of North Korean studies at Dongguk University in Seoul, said that taking hostages remained worth its while for North Korea. Although such hostage talks don't usually lead to negotiation over missile or nuclear weapons, the added numbers can certainly hamper and limit options the U.S. can take over North Korea," Ko added. Donald Trump is going to be played by Kim Jong-un who has handled the situation better than he has. John Nelson Wright, a senior research fellow in the Asia program at the London-based Chatham House think tank, agreed that Kim Jong-un's actions could be part of an effort to stop the U.S. military from attacking North Korea. But he said it was more likely such moves were grandstanding, and not about bringing the U.S. to the negotiating table. The current situation is not a bad one for Kim Jong-un, Nelson Wright said. He's had a lot of airtime and the more he continues to test missiles and move forward with militarization, he can demonstrate his independence to the international community and present himself to his people as unbowed. He added, it's poking a stick in President Donald Trump's eye and a signal of defiance. America has long since sought to put pressure on North Korea to stop its missile and nuclear tests that contravene United Nations sanctions, something Kim has ramped up under his leadership. His regime has made no secret of the fact it is working on a nuclear-tipped missile capable of reaching America. On Wednesday, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson said that the U.S. was not interested in regime change. But he previously had suggested that military action against Kim's regime was on the table. Earlier this week, state-run North Korean media said U.S. military provocations referring to drills carried out alongside South Korea, had left the region close to nuclear war. On Friday, it also accused the CIA and South Korea of being behind a failed assassination plot targeting Kim Jong-un. In the past, detaining, and then releasing, U.S. citizens has given Pyongyang leverage in negotiations with Washington or allowed the country to offer them up as goodwill gestures to the international community, experts say. In 2009, Kim Jong-il pardoned and freed two detained American journalists after former President Bill Clinton visited Pyongyang, giving North Korea a fleeting moment of international legitimacy. Five years later, Kim Jong-un released U.S. citizens Jeffrey Edward Fowle, Kenneth By and Matthew Todd Miller after James Clapper, then the Director of National Intelligence, made a secret visit to Pyongyang. At the time, North Korean state media trumpeted that that three Americans were being released following the repeated requests of President Barack Obama. Such detention and then handing over after harsh sentencing and releasing after a high-level U.S. official is a carefully planned tactic North Korea use, Dr. Lee Jung-hun, South Korea's ambassador for North Korean human rights, told NBC News. It's immoral, and shameless, the diplomat added but it is useful and they know it. Kim Jong-un has continued to detain American citizens, but experts note a shift in his tactics. While Trump told Bloomberg News on Monday that he would be honored to meet the North Korean dictator, many analysts believe that Kim no longer even aims to hold talks with the U.S. This is North Korea's hostage diplomacy, Dr. Ko said. They are like the human shields against the U.S. government with the ultimate goal of attention-grabbing. Lee So Yeon, president of New Korea Women's Union, an NGO for defectors, said American prisoners who were accused of crimes against the state were being used by Kim as a propaganda tool for a domestic audience. One stark difference between Kim Jong-un from his predecessors over hostage diplomacy is that he emphasizes publicizing detaining American citizens to the North Korean public, Lee said. By doing so, Kim Jong-un seems to confirm that North Korea is exposed to constant attack from the U.S. Nelson Wright suggested that Trump had made a mistake by suggesting that he was willing to meet Kim Jong-un. He has made a concession, he added. Donald Trump is going to be played by Kim Jong-un who has handled the situation better than he has.
with tensions escalating, Ambassador Lee said he would not be surprised to see more Americans being detained in the future. And, the former defector, agreed. North Koreans know that human rights matter to the U.S. and that the Americans are aggressive in protecting their people, he said. North Korea considers detaining an American a measurably successful move. Safra Smith reported from London. North Korea says is just waiting for Kim's order to unleash a final sacred war on the U.S. The claim comes from an article published by the secretive state's regime-run media. It pokes fun at Donald Trump's North Korea armada, led by the USS Carl Vinson. And it accuses the White House of bluffing and of being mentally weak. But Kim Jong-Union's army, the article goes on to say, does not make empty talk. It's just the latest piece of bombast from Pyongyang as tensions with the U.S. continue to rise. Another recent article warned that North Korea would reduce the White House to ashes in an all-out war. Meanwhile Kim Jong-Union has accused China of insincerity and betrayal in a further outburst on its propaganda channels. The latest editorial, published yesterday, takes aim at the U.S. nuclear carrier strike group currently lurking near North Korea. It is nothing but a bluffing of the mentally weak and a last-ditch effort of those with miserable end at hand, the editorial thunders. Our army, full of the spirit of annihilating the enemies, is waiting for an order to wage a final sacred war, with guns leveled at the detestable targets. Our strike will all at once turn into sea of fire, completely destroying enemies and winning a final victory. The powerful revolutionary army does not make empty talk. Four U.S. citizens now captured by North Korea amid fears of hostage situation. North Korea has detained another U.S. citizen on suspicion of acts against the state bringing the total to four amid fears of a growing hostage situation. U.S. citizen Kim Hak-song worked at the Pyongyang University of Science and Technology PUST, and was detained by Kim's police yesterday, North Korean media claimed. Three other U.S. citizens are currently held in North Korea, including Otto Warmbier who was arrested for tearing down a poster. KCNA said that a relevant institution was conducting a detailed investigation into Kim Hak Song's alleged crimes. The U.S. had previously accused Kim of detaining citizens to use as pawns or bargaining chips in diplomatic talks. Tensions have peaked with North Korea amid fears Kim is readying for a sixth nuclear bomb test after a string of ballistic missile tests. Kim Jong-Union is using hostage diplomacy as a part of his military and defense strategy with focus on preventing the U.S. from removing him from power as well as to prevent the U.S. from taking military options against North Korea, Dr. An Chan Il, president of the World Institute for North Korea Studies and a former defector, said. The latest arrest comes after North Korea declared the White House will be ashes in a shocking statement published by the KCNA.